If you watched my previous videos where I am trying to find out which memory chip is faulty on this module, then this will be the video you have been waiting for. In the first video I tried to come to a conclusion by looking at Memtest 86 Plus outputs, schematics and memory module connections. I also changed the order of the faulty module within a memory bank to see what effect the change has on the output of Memtest 86 Plus. And although I relied on the ASUS P55T2 P4 motherboard as a test platform only, at the end I predicted, to the best of my knowledge, U4 to be the faulty memory chip. In the second video I tried many suggestions from viewers that could help narrowing down the faulty chip. Thanks again for all your great ideas. I guess it was very obvious that I was anything but certain about my prediction to have found the faulty chip. The challenge I faced with my particular memory module was that there are always two chips, one on each side, that share the same data lines. Therefore, without knowing exactly which side is active, there are always two possible chips that could be blamed. The most promising approach to determine the faulty chip was simulating memory errors by shorting data pins on every single chip. With those results and testing on a second motherboard, I changed my prediction of the faulty memory chip in the second video to be, in order of likelihood, U6, U5, U14 and finally U13. But we have to remember that U6 and U14 share the same data lines. And so does U5 with U13. At that time I firmly believed that the faulty chip is located on side A. But nothing was certain. In today's video I am going to reveal the faulty chip. And I am 100% sure that I found it. So stay with me to find out which chip it is. But before we do that, a word from my sponsor. PCBWay offers a comprehensive custom PCB prototyping service. I have utilized their PCB manufacturing services on several occasions, both for my own designs and for other projects I have found online. PCBWay has consistently delivered on their promises, impressing me with their quality and reliability. In addition to manufacturing PCBs, they also provide 3D printing and CNC machining services, which I have yet to try out. If you are looking for a professional partner to transform your prototypes into reality, take a look at PCBWay.com by clicking on the link in the video description. To find the faulty chip, I will revert back to a very basic approach. And although simple, this method will reveal the faulty chip with 100% accuracy. Unless I destroy more memory chips in the process, of course. The plan is to desolder chips from the faulty memory module and replace them with known working chips. This identical memory module which I have tested extensively will serve as a donor. All chips on this module are working and are identical to the chips on the faulty module. I could replace the chips that I have singled out in my previous videos, but if you didn't go through the extensive testing I went through, you will not start with the selection of possible faulty chips. Instead, I want to use a method that would find the faulty chip as quickly as possible without any bias towards a certain group. If I would replace chip by chip, then I would have to repeat the same procedure of desoldering and replacing a chip with a good one 16 times in the worst case. This would be the very unfortunate scenario in which the faulty chip is the last one I replace. Also, keep in mind that on average I would have to run Memtest 86 Plus for at least 30 minutes to see memory errors appear. But probably I would have to run it for several hours to be certain. I guess you can imagine that the time required to complete this project would take several days. Instead of changing chip by chip, I will split them into groups and test one group against known good memory chips. Starting from the module, I will split the chips into groups for side A and side B, basically two groups of 8 chips each. To start, I have to replace all chips on one side with chips that I know to be good. As you may have seen in my previous video, I have already desoldered all memory chips from side B which was part of a test that I have done at the end of that video. Now I just have to desolder the working chips from the donor and add them to the free spaces on the faulty module. I am not going to lie, it is a lot of work attaching 8 memory chips. But with this method, I can immediately tell which side the faulty chip is or was attached to. Here are the two scenarios that can happen after changing all chips on side B. If Memtest 86 Plus finds no errors after a few hours of testing, then I know that the faulty chip must have been on side B and is part of the chips that I have already desoldered in the previous video. If on the other hand Memtest 86 Plus does find errors, then the faulty chip is still part of the module and one of the chips soldered to side A. In either case, we will eliminate 8 chips that we do not have to test individually. Yes, it is more work to replace 8 chips at once, but it will save us a lot of time because we also eliminate half of the chips that we know then cannot be faulty. 
So let's run memtest86 plus and see how the faulty module behaves with all the chips on site B replaced with known good chips. After several hours and multiple passes, memtest86 plus did not find any errors. This means the faulty chip has to be part of the chips I have removed in the previous video. So it is one of the chips among U9 to U16, which were located on site B. Oh no, all my predictions were wrong. I guess I shouldn't have relied on information from video 1 where I expected the faulty chip to be on site A. Since we now know that the faulty chip is one of those chips, we can split those 8 chips again into two groups of 4 each. I will be replacing the chips on spots U9 to U12 with their original chips. The original location is important because then I should get exactly the same error pattern in Memtest86 Plus that I got before. And again, there will be two scenarios. If Memtest86 Plus does not find any errors, then we have sorted another 4 good chips to the module, and the faulty chip must be one of the remaining 4 chips among U13 to U16. If on the other hand Memtest86 Plus does find errors, then we have sorted the faulty chip back to the module. Meaning, the faulty chip is one among chips U9 to U12. And again, running Memtest86 Plus for several hours and passes, no errors were detected. That means all chips are good and the faulty chip must be one of those remaining chips. So we split again, the last 4 chips, 2 groups of 2 chips each. This time we will replace U13 and U14. I remove the two good chips and solder the original chips back in their respective places. If Memtest86 Plus does not find any errors, then the faulty chip will be either U15 or U16. And at that point I may start doubting myself finding the faulty chip because we're slowly running out of options here. If on the other hand Memtest86 Plus does find errors, then we know it must be either U13 or U14. So. Let's run memtest86 plus and see what we get. Memory errors. I have never been so happy to see memory errors. And they are exactly where they were before using the ABIT PT5 motherboard. So we do know that the faulty chip is either U13 or U14. And we also know that U15 and U16 are good. Now let's go back to my previous video and listen to my prediction. If I had an option to rank the chips on likelihood of being faulty, my order would be as follows. U6, U5, U14 and finally U13. We already figured out that side A does not contain the faulty chip. Therefore, it cannot be U6 or U5 as per my prediction. The remaining chips are U14 and U13. At least, the faulty chip was shortlisted in my second video, so maybe this fact deserves your thumbs up for this video? Thanks. Since U14 was more likely to be the faulty chip in my selection, I will replace this chip first. We are down to two chips. A 50% chance in the fourth round of replacing chips and running memtest86+. After this test, we know for sure which chip is faulty. And guess what? After several passes and hours of testing the module, no errors were detected. U14 is the faulty chip. We found it. We finally found it. U14 is the faulty chip. I am happy that I had this chip shortlisted as part of the group of chips containing the faulty chip and you know the evidence I used to come to this conclusion. I guess there are a lot more parameters to consider when you want to find a faulty chip on a memory module than just looking at schematics and memtest86 plus information. In the end, the only solution that brought clarity was testing and using the process of elimination. Binary tree, binary search, divide and conquer, whatever you want to call it. But at last, we finally know which chip is faulty. Consistently, and probably more important, repeatably. Maybe there will be a few interesting use cases in the future, like trying to build a memory chip tester, or using an oscilloscope to see if this chip behaves any different, or maybe a multimeter is enough to determine a faulty chip. Whatever it is, I am now the proud owner of this faulty 2MB EDO memory chip. Let me know in the comments what you think about today's reveal and the final result. And with this we are at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and don't forget to give this video a like. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.